Thank you, Jim. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want you to know that uh, I'm here on a very happy occasion. Um, two of us have been very lucky in our lives to, to have grown up in a place where golf was uh, played and nurtured. And uh, I know this, that uh, when I look out in the audience tonight, I'm so happy that, uh, uh, that, that uh, Tom's family is here. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I can tell you the first time that I saw Tom Kite, uh, my brother and I were playing. I was uh, 11 years old, and, and my brother was 12. And uh, we went across the parking lot at the Austin Country Club and uh, went to the back nine, and I saw this fellow coming. Uh, and he said, do you mind if, if I play the back nine with you? And uh, this fellow was, he, he, he had on slacks, and he had on a shirt and a, and a, and a hat, he had a big red bag with brand new Wilson staffs, and he had some, some etonic shoes that were just unbelievable. My brother and I were just couldn't believe it. We said, God, this is incredible. That was our first introduction to Tom. And Tom, we, we went out and, and played the back nine, and he took a swing at it. And I guarantee you, my brother and I, our eyes were about this big. And he said, God, this guy can play. He was from Dallas. His father came down. He was going to take over the job at the Internal Revenue Service there in Austin. And um, there I saw Tom for the first time and watched him play and saw some shots go out. And I said, wow, he can really play. And there it started. And it gave us an, uh, an indication of what was to come later on in our whole life. At that time, you know, our parents, our, my father was a lawyer and he played a lot of golf. And uh, Mr. Kite was a fine player. Mrs. Kite was a wonderful player. So we went about learning this game and we happened to be learning under the best atmosphere that we could with Harvey Penick. He happened to know that Tom was, was very, very meticulous and he wanted to get things right and he was a real practicer. It was the first time that I ever saw a real practicer in my life. Tom is one of these people who doesn't leave anything to chance. And he, is, he has done such a great job of that. And I don't think there's anybody in our game who can really say that they have improved almost every year that they've played. Now, that's really hard in golf. Tom was a great player before, but to, but to try to add to his repertoire every time, he did such a great job. And it was very clear to many people certainly in, in high school and then in college when we went to the University of Texas and played together that, uh, you know, he, he was going to outwork everyone. He was really in the mold of a Hogan. Um, we shared so many uh, battles on the course. Uh, we were, I was so lucky that he was in the town. He pushed me and I pushed him. But all the while, Harvey was keeping a hand on us. He knew that I liked to play, so he just turned me out. He just said, you just go play, and I'll go watch Tom practice if he wants to. And he practice, he did. You know, he kind of reminds me of, uh, I thought about it earlier when, you know, they used to say at Johnny McDermott when he won the 1911 and 1912 U.S. Opens, and this guy was one of the first practicers. He would practice into a field with newspapers spread out in the field, and he'd get upset if the ball didn't stop on the right paragraph. Well, <laughs> that's the way Tom was, you know, and Harvey would, uh, would congratulate him about a certain shot that he did on the practice tee, and Tom would just shake his head. He said, no, we can do better. Well, all I can tell you is that growing, from the, growing up from the same town, I, we have a special pride in Austin that we were learning under, under the best. Harvey had a way of teaching everyone, as you know. He taught many of the women, Kathy Whitworth and Betsy Rawls and uh, Mickey Wright. And, and uh, there were so many people. But his pupils, every time that Tom did well, I felt a certain pride because he was doing it in his way and doing it the best way he could. Now, Tom 
all of his accolades, he won right over here at the TPC. He won many, many championships. We have about the same record, but I can tell you, I was not at the U.S. Open that he won. I was at home. I didn't qualify for the tournament. But uh, when I watched that unfold, and when I watched him handle those conditions, and uh, to, to reach down inside of himself like he did, it was, you know, it was a day for pure instinct. You couldn't, you know, you had to throw mechanics out the window. You had to react that day. It was really gusty and everybody was dropping strokes, but how he won that tournament, it was in the best fashion possible. He relied on his instinct. That was his day, and, and I can tell you that Austin was absolutely ablaze and so happy for him. And it was entirely fitting that he won that tournament uh, on the most, one of the most beautiful courses in the world. And we were so happy for him. But each time that Tom wins, I do feel a special pride. Austin is, is, a, is a wonderful place to live. We are proud of Tom every time. And he's getting better. He's going to win more tournaments on the senior tour. He's always. And he's in the best shape he's ever been in his life. He is diligent, and he's going to make it right. I am proud to know him. Texas is proud of him. I'm so happy for your family. Christy, you've toiled. All the women all that uh, are here tonight that are behind their husbands, we could not accomplish things without you. We want to thank you. Mr. and Ms. Kite, so happy that you are here. And uh, Harvey is looking down on us, and he's very happy. Tom's been a close friend of mine for many years, and we played against each other, and we played on the same teams. And I think you'll be impressed with his accomplishments as, I will, as I've always been. Let's take a look at Tom's career. Tom Kite's record speaks for itself. If nothing else, his performance at Pebble Beach was pretty astounding, as well as outstanding. Tom was, uh, was tough to play against because you could never read him real well. He, he was pretty stoic uh, as far as his facial expressions. Uh, he had that little fist pump he'd do when he made a putt, you know, and that, and that great smile. He was a tenacious player. I still think Tom Kite, right now, is in the top 10 best strikers of a ball in the world. He's always been a good straight driver, sound driver, good iron player. But he made his short game really work for him. He's got a Hogan work ethic. There haven't been too many people who've outworked Tom Kite. He's always been a great uh, person, as well as a, a great professional golfer. He's a winner. He's done it, he's played well, he's, his career has been punctuated by a long length of time of being a winner. Elected on the PGA Tour ballot, please welcome the 103rd member of the World Golf Hall of Fame, my friend Tom Kite. Thank you very much. What a great sport we play. Can you imagine growing up and competing against somebody from the time you were 12 years old until we're, uh, what are we, uh, 55 coming up, close to 55 for me. Ben's almost 53. And to have that kind of relationship, I, I tell you, it is, it is unbelievable to have your best friend also be your biggest nemesis. He, ha he has been a pain in my side since I was 12 years old. 
he has driven me crazy making 40 footers and 30 footers and 20 footers across the green uh, and I love him to death he, he's fabulous you know all of us are, are very fortunate this is this is without a doubt the best best sport no question uh, there are a lot of great things. I mean, we all work hard. Uh, ben alluded to the fact that I spend a lot of time on the practice tee and the putting greens trying to, trying to hone my game, but uh, everybody works at this game. This, this is not a natural sport. The golf swing is not a natural motion. We all have to develop our own swing and our own technique and our own abilities, but uh, everybody has a, a certain amount of work ethic that we do. And, and you have to go through that. But, the, you know, apart from that, we also have to get, some, get really lucky. We have to get the good breaks. And Ben alluded to it out there. The biggest break that I ever had was my dad getting a raise and being transferred from Dallas down to Austin. He was, uh, he was with the IRS, and they opened up a brand-new service center down there in Austin, Texas, where all the lucky people in the seven southwest states get to send their returns every April. So he came down there as the director of that, and, and I was a 12-year-old kid growing up in Dallas, played golf all the time. I didn't know what I was in, in store for. The opportunity to move to Austin to take lessons under arguably the greatest teacher that there's ever been in the history of the game and to go up against competing on a weekly basis with a future Hall of Famer is just more than any kid could ask for. Harvey was so instrumental and he was so wonderful for us and, and he taught everybody as an individual. There, were, there was no method teaching. He didn't get into that. He, he taught Ben totally different than me. He taught all of the students totally different from, from another one. He had a great empathy with his student. He wanted to make sure they understood what he was trying to get across to them and he just did a phenomenal job with that. And, you know, to have a chance to, to play against Ben, and it wasn't just Ben. I mean, Ben will be the first to tell you that there were so many kids in Austin. When we were growing up, there was probably 200,000 people in that town, maybe 250,000. I will promise you there were more single-digit handicaps in that town than there were any city ten times the size across the nation. And it's all because of the great instruction that Harvey Pennant gave us. If you, had, if you didn't take lesson from Harvey, you probably took a lesson from somebody who had taken a lesson from Harvey. You know, it, all, it passed all the way down. If it, uh, you know, the golf coach at the University of Texas that Ben and I played under, Coach George Hannon, he took lessons from Harvey Penick. He was passing the thing down to all his boys. And so everybody got better because of that. But the competition is just incredible uh, that we had around Austin. We grew up. To grow up in that competitive environment with that kind of instruction is something that nobody could uh, you, you, you can't even ask for anything that phenomenal. It was, it was a truly a blessing and a great break. When I had a chance to, to turn professional, uh, I went out on tour. Harvey gave me the best advice that I've ever heard in my life. You know, we play in corporate programs all the time. People ask you, you know, Tom, we know you've worked with a lot of teachers. You, you worked with Davis Love Jr. and, and Bob Toski and Costas and, and uh, Chuck Cook and Jim McLean and Butch Harmon and Dennis Satisher and Dave Phillips and, and all these guys that I've talked to that have all given me some great things. And they've been just wonderful. They've gave me some great advice throughout the years and it allowed me to or helped me get to be a little bit better. They kind of guided my, my golf along and they taught me so well. But the best advice that I ever got still came from Harvey. He was such a genius. And I was getting ready to uh, head out. I'd just gone through the qualifying school, just getting ready to go out to the LA Open in 1973, the very first tournament of the year. We had just finished up a practice session one afternoon. I was flying out the next morning. Harvey walked up, put his arm around me. He said, Tommy, when you get out on tour, I want you to go to dinner with some really good putters. You know that? That kind of shocked me. We just got through working on my grip and making sure my alignment was good, my posture was good, and all the great things. And now he wants me to go to dinner with good putters. And, and it didn't hit me right off the bat. I just kind of dismissed it a little bit. And when I was flying out to Los Angeles the next morning, I started thinking about that comment. And think about it. You probably are not a very good putter unless you have a really good attitude. 
Harvey wanted me to hang around good people, good positive people, people with upbeat, happy attitudes, smile on their face, not whining, not crying, not moaning. He wanted me to hang around very talented people, the most successful people. He knew that if I went to dinner with good putters, if I went to dinner with good people that had great attitudes, that there was no question that I would be very successful. And I have been very fortunate to be able to do that. I have worked hard, always trying to remember that advice that Harvey gave me. From the friends that I surround myself with, to the business associates, to the caddies, they have all been the highest quality people that I can find. If I find somebody that I don't think fits in that category, I'll get away from them as quickly as possible and go find me a good putter to go to dinner with. No question about it. But I got to tell you, of all the people that I've been around, all the great teachers that have helped me, all the great players like Gary and Arnold and Lee and Dave Stockton and Charlie Cootie and, and uh, Dale Douglas that when I went out on tour, they put their arm around me and made sure I didn't mess up too badly. Uh, the best putters that I've ever been around are my family. They are the best, no question about it. Mom, Dad, Dad's 88, Mom's 86, they're here. They, they wouldn't miss for this for anything. I chose my parents well. My, my sister Karen, she's five years younger than I am, and she never really played golf. She never really uh, was given the encouragement to play golf, but I tell you, she has been a uh, support mechanism in my life that's just been incredible. She's been fabulous. Karen, I love you so much. I, I can't thank all the support. Thank you enough for the support that you've given me. And then Christy and David and Stephanie and Paul. These, these are the people that made it all worthwhile. Um, I have got a family that I'm so proud of. Geez, I'm choking up here. I thought Ben was going to be the first one to cry up on this stage. I'm choking up here talking about this. Um, they, uh, I'm unbelievably proud of them. My wife got one of the strongest compliments that anybody could ever give. Uh, years and years ago, when we came out there, a man named Arnold Palmer watched a little young rookie pro come out, play a couple of years, and, and was watching me try to play. And he just kind of off to the side, he paid attention to what was going on, and he picked Christy out as one of the top wives out on tour. Not because she was out there all the time, but because of the way she supported me, the way she allowed me to to pursue my dream and chase my dream. Uh, Arnold picked her out. I picked her out first. She was, she was pretty good. But I think, you know, Arnold and Gary, they recognize what it takes uh, out there in terms of wives. They, they surrounded them, themselves with really good putters too. They chose their wives very well. And, uh, you know, I tried to do exactly the same thing. It is absolutely a thrill for me to be here tonight. I cannot tell you how proud I am to go in with my good friends. There are a number of people that are in this Hall of Fame that I consider very, very close friends, people that I would be honored to go to dinner with any night of the week. I would love to be there with them. I am very proud, very pleased, and I cannot thank you enough. Thank you.